Here we are at last, a bit late, I know, but in this video, I'm talking about the Tin Hi-Fi P2 Planar Magnetic Earphones and why I've got so much shit on my desk. Let's go. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. And we're starting off with the box today. This is a real unboxing. I'm just gonna quickly show you how it works because it's a pretty cool little bundle. Of course, you got your uh, cardboard sleeve. Sleeve? Promise I speak English. On the outside, you've got a cardboard sleeve with a P2 on it. That's pretty obvious. Inside, you get this cool little box here. First of all, if you slide the top back here, that reveals the little P2 goodness inside. And underneath this part is a genuine leather carrying case. Beautiful little case, I'll get to that in a moment. Take these out. And on the bottom section of this box, there's a little pull out tray or shelf containing the accessories and so what you get is the cable in the box the cable is now over here you get three pairs of foam ear tips three pairs of silicone ear tips and i love this you get because the cable has 2.5 millimeter balance termination you get two adapters in the box one is 2.5 to 3.5 single ended and the other is 2.5 balance to a 4.4 millimeter balance termination so that is the unboxing kind of just wanted to show you that because i think it's pretty cool some people do not but if they disagree with me they're wrong i'm going to start off with this case first because i think it's really cool genuine leather by the way which is rare these days so genuine leather case look at that beautiful construction um, I've even heard reviewers and people complaining about this. What the hell? This is gorgeous. Sure, it's not going to fit in your pocket. Well, it will, but it might be a bit uncomfortable. But who cares? Look at it. It's beautiful. Okay, so enough with the case. I'm going to leave that right there. Before we get on to the earpieces, I'm going to look at this cable real quick. This is an 8-core 6N OCC copper cable. Beautiful, in my opinion. It handles quite well. It's fairly supple. At the top, you got color-coded QDC Type 2 pin connectors. You got this uh, gold trim with uh, carbon fiber pattern banding on it. A little chin slider there, yada yada. But long story short, this is a really nice cable and. In my opinion, it is worthy of a $300 plus dollar earphone. But let's move right on to the earpieces now and we'll come in a bit closer. I think these shells look fabulous. I really like the styling of these. It's a little bit understated, but if you look closely, I'll give you a close up shot here or somewhere later. You see this really rather intricate pattern on the side here that looks rough but is actually super smooth. And I just think that looks cool. The rest of the shells have this kind of semi-matte finish, a little bit similar to the T2 Plus exterior. But there's not a lot, whole lot to talk about here. There's that connector again. Pretty standard nozzle, it's got a good lip on it so your ear tips fit on there nice and securely. Uh, the shells are lightweight, they feel just like a regular in-ear monitor. A little vent there, I think it's the only one. It appears to be the only one. And that is about it. In terms of comfort, I find these pretty good. The, the nozzle is a little bit short for my preference. Um, the, the cable does tend to sort of twist them out of my ears a bit. I have to use larger tips, some of my largest tips to get a nice secure fit. But once I've got them in there with the right ear tips, I find them very comfortable. And 
in terms of noise isolation, they're okay, they're about average. Uh, I think, well, personally, I probably wouldn't take these out and about, but you can, There's, you definitely can, and I'll talk about that in a moment, what you can and can't drive these with, because like the P1, Tin P1 was notorious for, these are also hard to drive like a motherfucker. But we'll get on to that. So that is the fit, comfort, and build. Now, let's get on to the sources. Okay, spreading out again. And you might be wondering why I've got these things here. Well, it's because if you want to use the Tin Hi-Fi P2, you're going to need something like this to drive them because they have a low sensitivity, um, the impedance is fairly average for an IEM, but very low sensitivity, and these planar drivers do require quite a bit of juice to get them working optimally. So I actually found that some of these little um, dongle DACs are actually can drive these sufficiently, maybe not optimally, but fairly well louder than I can comfortably listen to, but I know that a lot, of, a lot of people listen to their earphones a lot louder than I do, but I found these to be, uh, to drive them reasonably well, reasonably well, but obviously with very little headroom in terms of output. This is the YLM or Yin Lu Mei B2. I love this thing. This is a Bluetooth amplifier, also works as a USB DAC, Fantastic. This drives these P2, no worries at all. And of course, my my little precious here, the Fat Lab Chimera. And the balanced output on these does like fucking a thousand milliwatts or one watt of output. So this definitely, let's just turn it on so you can see the the glory of the little glowing tubes inside. This, uh, yeah, this owns the P2, no worries at all. Here I've got the um, Felix Audio Echo Tube Amplifier. This does a great job of, um, amplif of driving these. And what else was I using? I was also using the Airmen TR Amp, and I found that could push them sufficiently well, at least for my listening levels. Although the, that one, the, the TR Amp, didn't have a whole lot of headroom left. So with all that aside, like I was saying, if you intend to buy these or use these, you're going to need some serious driving power. Don't plug these straight into a phone and then, oh, they sound terrible, because you've been warned, these will not be sufficiently driven by a smartphone, but they're not extremely demanding, you know, it's possible with things that common audio files have around that they'll be able to use these with. So with all that said, I guess it's time to talk about how these actually sound. And I personally have a love-hate kind of relationship with these. At times I love them, other times I just, I fucking hate them. And well, well let's just break it down. So the general signature of the P2 here is kind of U-shaped. Uh, the, the bass is boosted, the treble is boosted, and the mid-range is fairly neutral. It's just slightly on the warmer side of neutral. Um, compared to the, the, the Tin P1, I, sh I should have had it here with me just to show, but compared to the P1, these do have significantly more bass presence. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it is a better bass, there is just more bass. And they have um, a more extended and a more forward treble as well. Although, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's break it down even more, starting with the bass. Now the bass, oh, what to say, what to say. I will tell you that Insertion depth in your ears uh, plays a big part in how much bass you'll hear. Even one or half a millimeter can drastically 
change the bass response that you'll hear from these. And that is one of the overarching problems that these have in terms of getting the best sound. You really need to, the, the planets, the stars need to align, uh, which means the, the source, the amplification, the, the fit, the ear tips, and, the, and even the genre or particular song, they all need to align to get the best out of these and, and that just makes them, frankly, a bit of a pain in the ass. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the bass and uh, the bass is, well, of course, it's got that planar speed. It's got a nice fast attack and it's got a kind of a, a delayed decay to, to give a, that sense of natural weight to it. But it doesn't feel as clean to my ears as the, the P1 did. It sounds a little bit more mid bassy boomy. Um, and I guess that's, you'd have to expect that because the level of the bass is up there more. But for me, the bass kind of, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It does have a good impact. It does have a bit of punch. Uh, you do get some sub bass rumble as well. But for some reason, it just doesn't excite me that much. It feels a little bit lackluster. But that could be a result of the overall listening experience that I get with these. So with that said, let's talk about the mid-range now. And the mid-range, like I said, slightly warmer than neutral. Fairly good note weight. Um, vocals sound great and a lot of acoustic instruments sound great. Instruments in general can sound really good on these. It just depends on the track. And, and that's a, why these are so freaking inconsistent when you're listening. In general, I would say the mid-range, you know, is pretty good. It's pretty good. They do have that excellent resolution, but because perhaps because of the boosted bass and the, the, the lifted treble, the, I find the resolution on these isn't seems to be less than the P1, the original P1, but still fairly good in most cases. All right, so finally, moving on to the treble, and, and this is the area where I think the uh, P2 sort of goes off the rails a little bit. There is a pretty large peak at seven kilohertz, so it brings definition to instruments, it gives percussion a nice snappy attack, um, but it also can introduce a little bit of sibilance here and there on occasion. And I would like to have seen that seven kilohertz peak just brought down a little bit. But I think the problem, the big problem, possibly, I, I, it's hard to tell, but, um, after about 11 or 12 kilohertz, the, the upper treble, uppermost treble response sort of lifts and goes off the charts. And while most of that is actually inaudible for most people, it does have a resounding effect on the entire sound from top to bottom. And what it does to my ears is it kind of adds this unnatural, sort of uncomfortable sheen or aura to every note. It kind of, even when you can't hear it, it's like this radiance. It's like um, looking at the sun through a lens and you get that lens flare. It's like that. Every note just has this sort of hint of, of upper treble ringing to it. And it can make certain sounds sound a little bit too thin or a little bit too sharp in their attack. A lot of crash cymbals sound very thin and a little bit brittle and they have this unnatural sheen, this sort of ringing to them. And it just, it just destroys the whole sound. But then sometimes when like when those planets do align, I have had some amazing experiences with these, but in general, it's just too inconsistent, um, which leads me to my conclusion now. 
I'm not going to break down the, the pros and cons because I've covered all that much already. But to summarize, look, if you are a person who has money to burn and you're sort of buying IEMs left and right, sort of the more more expensive type, then you might you might get something out of these. It might be worthwhile you're buying them just to check them out. Uh, you might even like them. You might also hate them. Honestly, if if you are someone who's just saving up for your first big IEM and you thought, oh, I'm going to go big and go for the P2, I would strongly recommend you do not because you might just hate them and then you'd be fucked, basically. Um, there is just too much of a gamble because I, it depends so much. Switching between sources changes the sound, but in particular, it's each individual song that has different properties and some sound okay, some sound pretty good, but a lot just sound a little bit annoying on these. And unfortunately, I cannot recommend these generally. I think what Tin Hi-Fi is doing is great. Like planar magnetic IEMs are still a bit of a rarity and Tin Hi-Fi, well, they start starting with the P1, they made it sort of very affordable so a lot of people could experience that planar sound and with the p2 they've they've tried to address the issues they had with the old model and some of those issues they did fix like the the, the level of the bass but then they've sort of gone off the deep end with the treble here and it didn't quite work but you have to praise them for sort of stepping into that unknown territory and at least having a go at it because it means that it's more likely down the track that them or another company is going to make a fucking epic planar magnetic IEM and that will be largely in thanks to efforts like this. So that about wraps it up guys. If you liked this video, give it a like, Parfam audio file style. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more reviews like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you later.